If you're having trouble getting your prints to look like what you're seeing on your calibrated monitor, you have a profile problem. Now a profile on your monitor helps you to see accurate color and you obviously knew that that was important so you profiled your monitor. But have you profiled your printer and the paper you're using in it? We're going to show you how to use calibration software and calibrated print profiles in order to make sure that your printing is perfectly accurate and what you see on your monitor is going to actually print out in your printer or even if you use a print service online. Now profiles are definitions of color and there are camera profiles and monitor profiles and printer profiles for their individual papers. If you have a profile for your monitor, then your monitor can show you accurate color. It is a definition. If you have a profile for your printer and the paper you're using, then the two of those can be used in order to translate what you're seeing on your monitor to what your printer is printing. If you don't have a profile for your printer and the paper you're using, then you have all this accurate color, but nothing to translate it to. And so what comes out on your printer can't possibly be accurate. That's why we need to make or get a profile for the paper you're going to print on. The first way we do that is to go to the actual paper maker's website and get the profile by downloading it and install it in the proper place. The second way we can get a profile is by making it ourselves. And we're going to do that by going into the i1 profiler software and clicking on the printer profiling button. When we do that, it's going to show us a chart of color swatches. And that chart is going to be printed on our paper, whatever paper we choose to profile. I'm going to choose to profile a Canon paper that I already have a profile for, but I want it to be more accurate. And so I'm going to choose my printer. It is the Canon Pro 1000. And I'm going to print it on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. And I'm choosing to use the large test chart. I can choose a small or a medium, but the more color swatches I use, the better or more accurate my profile will be. Now I'm going to hit the print button and it's going to print out three pages of color swatches which I will then use to profile the paper. So our printer has printed out three pages of color swatches and we need to register those color swatches and read them with the i1 Pro profiling device. Now, once we click the next button, it's gonna ask us to actually measure white so we need to calibrate this unit and we're going to do that with our white color chip inside of the base of the unit. So we simply set that on our desk and we set the profiler on that white chip and then we click on the calibrate button. And now that it knows what white is, the light turns on, it's ready to read our printed out color swatches. What we're going to do is we're going to set these color swatches into this little clip and we're going to use this ruler to make sure we are only reading one line at a time. So in order to read the first line of color swatches, I'm going to put the calibration device on the little slider on the straight edge and I'm going to make sure that clicks in nice and firm and that tells me that the reading device is directly over the first line of color swatches and there's a button on the left hand side of the calibration device. I'm going to click that and hear a beep. That beep tells me to start moving the calibration device across the chips, across the, the swatches of color. And when I get to the other side and let go, it will beep again telling me to go back the other direction. And I need to read each line twice. So here we go. I click. I hear that beep and I move the device across the line till I get to the end and let go. It beeps again. I click again and move back across 
like this. Now I'm going to look at the monitor and make sure that I confirmed a good read on that line. And it's interesting because you'll see the before after on the colors, what the device read and what it thought it was going to read can be close and sometimes they can be very different. Each time we record one line, the software moves down to the second line and we need to move the straight edge down to that second line. And then we do the same thing all over again. Push the button, wait for the beep, move it across, let, let it go, click it again, move it across. And now we've got the second line and each time we see it record. Now if I were to go a little too fast and click on here, it gives me a red signal and says that was way too fast. You need to do it again. So all I need to do is go through each one of these lines on all three pages. Once I've done that, the software is going to create a printer profile for that given paper. And with that, we now have the definition of color as pertaining to the paper that's being printed from the printer. And with that definition and the definitions in your monitor profile, you now can translate and everything you see on your monitor can be perfectly translated to your printer. So we finished reading our color swatches and now when we hit the next button, we get a graph that shows us what the changes that are occurring in this profile are. Now the default lighting area with ambient light, this is not going to change your profile. It's just simply giving you information about it and what it would look like under certain lighting conditions. So all we're going to do is hit the next button. So I'm going to name this Canon Premium Matte Pro. And that's the type of paper that I've just read. So you can see that the Canon Premium Matte Pro ICC profile has been saved in the same place where all of my profiles are saved. But I also want to take the profiles that I downloaded from a paper manufacturer and put them in the same area. So I simply grab the profiles that I downloaded and drag those into this folder. So now all of the paper profiles that I have are buried deep inside my computer in the profile area. Once they're inside of that profile folder, we can actually access them through Lightroom, Photoshop, and other photo editing software. So let's go into Lightroom now and take a look at our file. We are going to print this image. At the bottom of the print dialog menu, there is a print job area where we choose all of the settings for our printer. So we're going to print to a printer. We're going to print at 300 DPI. We're going to be printing to a matte type paper and with a standard sharpening at 16 bit output. But below that you'll see a color management area and in it we find the profile. Now right now it says managed by the printer. We don't want the printer to manage it. What we're going to do is we're going to click on this and look for our paper but you can see that we can't find it. What we really need to do is click this little button called other. And when we click on the other option we get all of the possible profiles on our computer. One of them is our Canon Premium Matte Pro Paper. You'll also notice that down at the bottom, the Vellon profiles that we downloaded from the paper manufacturer are also there. So let's click on those as well. So we have our two Vellon papers and we also have our Canon Premium Matte Pro. Click OK. And now those profiles will also be available in the color management drop down profile menu. And I'm going to choose the Canon Premium Matte Pro ICC profile. Now, below that is an option for intent. Intent can either be perceptual or relative. If you know what those mean, go ahead and choose the one that's best for you. But 
I choose perceptual because it gives me the best pleasing print that I can possibly get when my colors get outside the printable gamut for my specific printer and paper. So choose perceptual if you don't understand any of those. Once we've set the proper printer settings on our printer dialog box and we've chosen the proper profile from the Lightroom print job area, then Lightroom has what it needs to translate what I'm seeing on my screen to what the printer can give me in the print. Because now we have a monitor that's profiled and a print paper that's profiled. Now the translation can occur and you will get exactly what you want from your printer from Lightroom. If you want to see what your print is going to look like before you ever hit the button to print it, you need to go to the soft proofing option in the develop module. So in the develop module at the bottom, you will find in the toolbar a checkbox that says soft proofing. If you click on that checkbox, you will see what your print is going to look like in any given paper. The paper is selected over on the right hand side, right below the histogram, you will see a proof settings option and the profile line, simply click on that drop down menu and choose the paper that you want to preview. I'm going to choose the Canon Premium Matte Pro ICC profile and I'm going to choose Intent Perceptual. Now I'm looking at a simulation of the paper that I'm about to print on. Let me go back and forth between soft proofing and not soft proofing so you can see the difference between the way the image looks. So this is the way the image looks inside the computer. If I click on soft proofing, this is the way it will look on the paper. Now it's softening up the print a bit. It's yellowing the paper. The clouds are getting a little bit dingier. They're not quite as pure white simply because it's simulating the yellowness of the normal paper that's going to be printed on. So now I can actually preview exactly what my print is going to look like on any given paper, which means that if I don't like the way it looks on this paper, I can go back to the profile drop down menu and I can choose, say, a deep matte paper and see what it would look like on that. Or I could go up and choose a pro photo luster paper and see what it'll look like on that. And you can see that on a pro luster paper, the tree is a much richer, darker object in the photograph. But if I go back to my premium mat, watch the tree, and it gets a little lighter, a little softer. So now I know exactly what my prints will look like before I ever hit the print button.